Hello everyone, this is Manish and in this video I am going to discuss about the complete batch management process using SCCM and WSYS when it is used as a software update point. So this video I thought of it could be going to be very big so for that purpose I divided into two parts. This first part will be more focusing upon the server side configuration and the workflow and the second part will be focusing upon the client side, the troubleshooting related to the patching at the client side at the workstation level. So let's focus upon this video. I'm going to cover a few topics in this video. The first one would be the complete end-to-end -end workflow that how software update, how SCCM, WSYS and Microsoft up, uh, update can work in a single umbrella. And I'm going to show you about the user experience that how we can change that kind of user experience at the client side by doing some kind of configuration. I'm also going to discuss about the component responsible for scanning the software update at the user side and how we can control that kind of behavior and I will be discussing about few log files that what you need to check through just to make sure your SCCM and WSYS is healthy and communicating with each other and the log files involved when we are, you are downloading the updates and finally I am going to deploy a update we will be giving you a demo by deploying an update for the client side let's begin let's understand the patching process in terms of a diagram where I am going to show you the SCCM uh, WSYS and Microsoft Update, all how all these three things work together. This is my SCCM server with its own database. I will be having another box where software update point will be installed. And it will be having its own database. So for SCCM to install, uh, to deploy the patches, you need to have a software build point. So you can install the software build point on the same box, but organization used to prefer to have a in a different box. So that's why I'm showing you in a different box. Software build point means that you need to install the WSYS, Windows Server Update Services. That's a part of the Windows Server. You can install it uh, as a role, Windows Server role. So this second box, which you can see on the right hand side, is having the WSYS. The only thing you need to do is that you the, you need to just install the WSYS but the configuration, you don't need to do the configuration because SCCM is going to take care of all kind of configuration. WSYS, you need to understand what exactly WSYS is. Uh, WSYS is a component, is an application through which you can deploy the updates in the environment. It's a free application. But if you're using it in with the conjunction with the SCCM, it will provide you a lot of rich features where SCCM can do the reporting part. The reports are pretty much very nice. It can show the updates in a very good format and easy to maintain. The distribution point concept it can be also used. So WSUS and SCCM when used together, it gives you the perfect combination of deploying the updates. Now the third component is Microsoft Update. So uh, once the, uh, the configuration on SCCM is done, the software repo point and production uh, product and classification has been specified, the sync will happen. Sync usually used to happen every seven days. That can be, then you, that you can configure. So when the sync is happening, this, there will be two sync is going to happen. The first sync is between the Microsoft Update and the WSS. So this first sync is going to download the metadata from the Microsoft Update to WSS database. So what exactly the metadata is? Metadata is nothing but like an index, the index of all the updates, which is going to store the information of the list of all updates, along with the size, the applicability, and the requirement. Now, when that information is saved into the, into the WSYS database, it is in a readable format for the WSYS. SCCM is not going to understand about that update. So second sync is going to happen between the WSYS and the SCCM. So now when the second sync is going to happen, then the metadata which is saved on WSYS will be now uh, downloaded to the SCCM in a readable format. Now when we have all the list of updates available on SCCM, now it's easy to deploy. Now let's see the configuration part. I have logged on to the SCCM server. Navigate to administration, site configuration and sites. Here if you go to the config configure site components and click on software update point. 
you will be able to see two settings over here. One is the classifications. Here we have to specify the what kind of updates we want you to uh, download. Critical updates, definition updates, feature updates. So we have a lot of options. And another option we have to select for the products. So all the products related to the Microsoft can be specified over here. You can specify the Windows Server as well, Windows 10, Windows 11, SQL Server. So, so many options are available. So based upon the organization requirement, we have to select it. So once this is selected, the sync uh, will be initiated. So sync usually used to happen once in a week. Let me show you. You can in initiate the sync manually also. If you go right click and click on synchronize software update, the sync will happen. So you can see in my uh, uh, lab, the sync has already been done. I can see lots of updates available. So let's see how we can verify the settings related to how the sync is working. There are two most important log files related to the verification of the sync between the SCCM and WSUS along with the uh, Microsoft update. That is WCM.log and second is WSYNCMGR.log. I'm going to provide this information into the description. Okay, so the first log file WCM.log is important for you to verify whether the communication between the SCCM and WSUS is working fine or not. For example, if there, some, there is some issue with the WSUS, SCCM will not be able to connect to WSUS and the sync will not happen. So this is the kind of configuration you can go through it. Another thing is that on SCCM server, you need to launch the WSUS admin console. If console is launching properly, then the things will be working fine. If there are some issues, you need to rectify, identify that. So here in WCM.log, I can see that attempting connection to local WSUS server is successful. Successfully connecting connected to the local WC server. Everything is working fine. WSYNCMGR.log will eventually show you the metadata downloading. So you can have a look over here. If I look over here, I need I will be interested in looking two information. One is the synchronization for WSYS. You can see sync starting WSYS synchronization. Once it is done, it is going to initiate the second sync that is related to SMS means SCCM starting SMS database synchronization this is the synchronization which I was talking to sync to so you can see the information of all the patches if I go I have a look it will be downloading the information for each and every patch on weekly basis So we verified the configuration that software update and metadata is downloaded. But how come the client is able to understand that we need to get the patch from SCCM server but not to con contact the Microsoft update? For this thing, software update agent is responsible and that can be done through the client settings. Let me show you. If you go to the administration, client settings, I have created the policy for the client setting. Let me show you what exactly it is. So if I click on software update, Enable software updates on clients. The moment I make it as yes and deploy to the existing workstations or collection, it is going to enable the software update agent and it is going to change. It is going to create a local policy to point to the WC server. Uh, after deploying the patch, I'm going to show you that setting that how as a local policy is going to apply on that device. We can verify that. So, but that setting will be coming through this one, which you can see in front of right now. So another setting is software update scan cycle. Software update agent is going to force the client to do the scanning every seven days. It is going to scan against the WS2 server, whatever the metadata is over there. And based upon that, it is going to provide the information back to the SCCM that boss, this patch I required and this patch is I don't require. And the another patch, it is not applicable for me because if I am on Windows 10 21 H2, if there is 20 H2 patch that might not be applicable for me. So that kind of logic will be done. Another setting is schedule deployment revaluation. So this schedule deployment revaluation is going to re-trigger the updates every week. For example, one week the patch is deployed. So after one week, it is again going to re-evaluate whether the patches are missing or not. Maybe last time the patch got uh, failed. It didn't install. So next week it is going to eventually try to install again. Maybe someone tried to uninstall the patch and they were successful. It is again going to force. So this re-evaluation redeployment of evaluation is going to work in that scenario. Now when you click on the computer restart, 
this is the user behavior that how the uh, user notification will work for example uh, this is the setting which I have specified specify the amount of time after the deadline before a device gets restarted it means when I'm deploying a patch I will be specifying a deadline so I'm going to give them a 360 so I have specified the 360 minutes so it means I am providing them ample amount of time they will be start getting notification that your device will be restarted in six hours 360 minutes means six hours but I also want that there should be some kind of irritating behavior for the user which can show a pop-up which cannot be which user cannot be should not be able to close it so by default that behavior is 15 minutes that for in last 15 minutes there will be a pop-up but think about it if last 15 minutes a uh, user is on break or he or she was away so they might miss it probably we can go with 120 minutes or 240 minutes but for a demonstration purpose I have made it 359 minutes so it means for almost six hours it is going in the last six hours once the deadline is reached the patch is installed there will be a pop-up the tooth notification which cannot be closed so it will be showing a countdown, time, countdown timer that these are the remaining minutes before a restart is going to occur okay so our patches are downloaded let's deploy a patch to few devices go to software update all software update here I can see thousands of patches but just to make things simple I am going to create few rules click on add criteria require expire and superseded let me explain you so what I am doing is I just wanted to search those patches which are required so let me make it as is greater than or equal to 1 means a patch should be required at least on one device expired no I don't want any update which is expired because the, those updates can be shown as the gray with gray icon and the superseded that will be shown as yellow icon so we can deploy the superseded uh, updates but there is no point of deploying it superseded updates are those updates where there is a update a new update is available which supersedes this one so there is no point of deploying it if I am going to deploy any new update right now so let's click on search so you can see it is only showing me few updates only not such a big list so let me deploy a few updates mm, let me pick let me just click on based upon the release date okay let me deploy a few updates I'm selecting 21 h2 20 h2 and a few dotnet framework also for 21 h2 and 20 h2 right click and click on deploy if I go I'm going to click on download it is just going to download but not going to deploy if I click on deploy it is going to download as well as deploy so download will only happen if it is not downloaded previously so let me just use some yeah I think let me use with the default name whatever it is showing over here I'm going to use a collection my existing collection okay I'm specifying as a required means it should be a forceful installation of patches available means just optional required means forceful okay I'm showing as specifying as that when this software uh, will be available so let me specify a time I think as soon as possible is okay and deadline by default it is giving me seven days of time but let me make it as soon as possible click next user experience so I'm not going to change any user experience specifically into the device restart behavior because I just don't want to suppress the restart behavior because I just wanted to see that notification of four hours or six four hours of time so let's not do anything over here but I wanted to initiate it at a specific deadline so I just wanted to install it by ignoring the maintenance window when the installation deadline is reached allow the following activities to be performed outside of maintenance window so I'm forcing it to install it at any cost but suppress the reboot because it will give me be giving us me the notification click next alerts click next deployment package I'm going to create a new package I have created a folder in a location so I just wanted to download this 
the patches into this location. Let me provide the name of the, pa the deployment package. Click next. Select the distribution points. Downloading from internet. Next. Download option, download software from distribution point and install. Yep. Verify. Click next. And now it is going to download the patches from the Microsoft update. So the good thing is the patch will be downloaded only once. Once it is downloaded, it will be distributed to all distribution points and the corresponding the users or devices will be getting the patches from their distribution point. They will not be going to the uh, Microsoft update. You can verify the downloading of patch through patch downloader.log. You can check into the description. I'm going to provide the name of the log file. This file will be located in the, the temp directory. So simply type the percentage, temp percentage. So if I look over here, I can find the patch downloader.log. It will be giving me the thorough status of how the patches are downloading. You can have a look. It is showing as 10, 20%, 60. So 80% has been downloaded. So this gives me a good idea that how the patch download is in, downloading is happening. I can see the patches are downloaded. Click on close. You can verify the same thing through the log file. Patch download.log. Let me see in the source. Here I can see the patches are available. It, it has been downloaded. That's it. So now I can go to the client side and see that how the patches are working. So I have logged on to the Windows 10 device where I have deployed the patch. I need to wait for some time to get the patch or else what I can do is I can initiate the machine policy. I'm launching the configuration manager properties. Initiate the machine policy. In next few seconds or minutes, I will be able to see the pop-up that the patch is available and it will be showing as downloading. Let me launch Software Center. And here I can see that software changes are required, the patches are available and it has started initiating the installation. Yep, downloading and installing the software. Meanwhile, I can show you the policy which, ha which has been created by the SSM server to, to change the software update location. Rather than using the Microsoft Grid, it is going to use the WSS server to get the to fetch the information related to the metadata. Just launch the RSOP resultant set of policies. Go to comp computer configuration, administrative templates, Windows components, Windows update, manage updates offered from Windows update, Windows server update services. So if I double click over here, specify internet, Microsoft update service for detecting updates, I can see it has changed the location to the my local server. So SSM01 is where I actually I have installed my software update point role as well. And it is a local policy. You can have a look over here. Here you can see that I am getting the notification that your computer is about to restart. So it is giving me a six, approximately six hours of time. This is happening because of the the time period which we have specified that it will be giving us the pop-up so that the user have ample amount of time to restart the device. Thank you.